Hi, I'm hoping now that you'll be in possession or you'll be thinking about purchasing a Still Spirit Starter Kit. Now with the Still Spirit Starter Kit, um, you will have obviously the triple pack yeast and you'll be needing six bags of sugar. But before we go into detail about that, I'd just like to run through the two most important things, cleanliness and temperature. The first thing we've got to remember is that anything that comes into contact with the beer, wine or spirit needs to be immaculately clean. Now we actually take it to another level and what we say here is let's make sure it's not only clean but it's actually sterilised as well. All parts that come into contact are therefore sterilised. And what we use is we have a cleaner steriliser. Uh, which is the same one that is used by the commercial breweries for cleaning the pipes. It's a chlorine-based steriliser and it's very simple to operate. Now the most important thing is to make sure that it comes into contact with all parts. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually set up the sterilisation process. Here we have a 25 litre bucket. As you can see, it's graduated on the front. That makes life a lot easier when we're actually measuring out. Now, if your bucket hasn't got graduations on it, please put them on. Measure out 25 litres of water, mark it. Measure out 20, mark it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take five, approximately five litres of hot water. And as you can see, I've got a bit of a cheeky tap uh, that pulls out, makes life a lot easier for me. This equipment is clean before we started. In my opinion, lovely and clean. Okay, because it's clean, we can obviously then do things a little bit easier than if this was all stained and horrible. I think it's really important to make sure that once you've done a brew, you really clean your equipment so it's all ready for you next time. As I said, we're just putting about five litres of hot water I like to use hot water because the steriliser seems to dissolve that little bit better in the hot water into the bucket. And we're almost there. Okay. So with five litres in the bucket, we're going to take the steriliser and we'd add a tablespoonful. I'm just going to sprinkle that in, make sure we've got plenty in there. And then I'm going to take the, the, the paddle, could be a paddle or a spoon, and we're just going to dissolve that and make sure that's nicely mixed in the liquid. Beautiful. And what we're going to do now is put all the things which come with our starter kit into the bucket. We've got the bucket lid fitted with a grommet. That's to take the airlock. We've also got a hydrometer, which is here. That's going in. We've also got a thermometer, which has come with our starter kit. All our starter kits include a hydrometer and thermometer. Most important things for beer, wine and spirit making. We'll go into detail about them later. We've also got an airlock and a red cap for it. And finally, we have the spoon or the paddle. In some of the starter kits, you'll get a spoon. In some of them, you'll get a paddle. So we'll, I've put both in so that we can show you how that works. Now, in some of the luxury starter kits, you'll also get a trial jar, again, which we will go into detail about at a later stage. But I'm going to slot that in now as well. It's a bit awkward when we actually come to try and swirl the water around the bucket because we need to make sure that all that water in there comes into contact with all parts of the bucket and the lid. So what I tend to do is if I can find myself a nice bright, clean, really clean cloth or sponge. We can then drop that into the liquid and we can just squeeze it around all parts of the bucket and the lid to make sure everything is being touched with that lovely cleaning sterilising solution. The other important thing is I've got my hands wet. That can matter later on. So don't worry about getting your hands all covered in steriliser. Again, once you've done it, just rinse them off. The steriliser that we use takes about 20 minutes to be fully operational, to have done the job. You can use other sterilisers, the things like Milton. Some people use bleach, God, God forsake them, but 
There are other sterilizers which are available, but we think this particular one is a nice easy one to use. That tub's going to do you five or six brews. You're looking at well under two pounds for it, so it's not crown jewels. You'll get one of these included in most of the starter kits as well. Okay, so now I'm hoping that you've received your still starter kit. And you're either wanting to uh, make your wash or perhaps learn a little bit more about it before you actually purchase. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to make what's called the wash. This is the start of the fermentation process. We've dealt with cleanliness, we've dealt with the temperature. So those two things we can move to one side. We've got the bucket now, which is all nice and clean and ready to go. What we're going to do with the still spirits, it's slightly different from all the other products that we do. Because we're using six bags of sugar or seven bags of glucose powder, we can actually control our temperatures. What we're going to do here is we're going to take 21 litres of water at 30 degrees C into our bucket. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to add the water to the bucket. And we're going to fill it up to the 20 litre, 21 litre mark. What will happen then is when we add our sugar to the bucket, it will increase the volume from 21 litres to 25 litres. The temperature of this water needs to be 30 degrees C. Now I can hear you saying, Richard, you've said the start temperature should be between 20 and 25 degrees C. Well, the good news is that the, the liquid temperature at 30 degrees C, when we add the sugar, will drop down to 25 degrees C. And this particular yeast that we're using loves to start at 25. And that's why we're doing it this way. Now the advantage of doing it this way is that because we've not added the sugar at the start, and because we're starting with the 21 litres at 30 degrees C, if you get your mix slightly wrong, and your temperature is too high or too low, you can soon jug a little bit out, and then add a little bit more, either hot or cold water, depending on what you're going to need. It's a bit different, as I say, from the wine and the beer, because obviously you've not got grape juice or you haven't got malt extract to worry about, which will vary in temperature. We've got sugar, and we know what that sugar's going to do. So that's the bonus that we're faced with here. We're just waiting for this to fill up. Obviously, we can use a jug to jug it in if that's easier. Probably, if you haven't got a cheaty tap like I have, which makes life so much easier, um, it makes life easy to, to do. I'm also just checking as we go along the temperature just to make sure we're not far away from our 30 degrees C. We're actually at 27, so we'll just adjust it to put a little bit more hot in. And we're getting close to our 21 litre start volume. The yeast that we're actually using on the Still Spirits product, the triple distilled yeast, is a very, very special yeast. We ended up having to do way over 3,000 fermentations to actually find the right yeast to do this particular job. What we're looking for is we're looking for a yeast that gives off no off flavours at all. Now that actually is incredibly hard to get. Much easier for it to give off flavours. If we're making wine, obviously the yeast can give off some nice flavours which is going to increase the quality of the wine. But with the spirit making, as I say, we're looking for something that's going to give off no off flavours at all. So where are we? We're up to 17. So we just need to add a little bit more. Get it up to the 21 litres before we actually start. We're getting close. We're getting close. So going back to the yeast, it is very, very difficult to achieve something that is going to give off no off flavours. But that's so important in distillation. 
I think we're getting pretty close now. Yeah, we're almost there. So, we just need to check the temperature. And that is, well, 29.30. We're absolutely spot on there. And what we're now going to do, don't forget, if that temperature was slightly out and it was too cold, just take some out and add some more hot water to it. As long as we've got the start volume of 21, you can have as many goes at it as you want. What we're now going to do is we're going to add the sugar to it. With a choice, we can either use six bags of ordinary granulated sugar or seven bags of brewing sugar. We are going to use brewing sugar. The advantage to using brewing sugar is it will produce a slightly cleaner, crisper fermentation and liquid as well. Sugar is 100% fermentable, whereas the glucose is only 90% fermentable. That's why we're going to use seven bags of glucose as opposed to six bags of sugar. The glucose is slightly more expensive. Whether it justifies the extra cost, only you can make that decision. That will depend on your taste buds. As a general rule for myself, I will always use glucose powder when I'm making a spirit, but if I'm making a liqueur, which is not quite so crucial to the quality, I will use sugar. So we've added three bags. And we just keep going until we get all seven bags in. As you'll see on, uh, on the website as well, we actually do a special price for seven bags of glucose powder. So that's well worth looking at. And our last bag. In she goes. Get a little paddle and give it a good mix up. As you can see on the front, we're 25, so we've increased our volume from 21 litres to 25 with the extra sugar. In your starter kit, you might end up with the spoon rather than the paddle. Don't worry about that, they both do the same job. And if you particularly, you can get what's called a degassing stick that will go on the end of an electric drill, and that just spins around and helps you to mix up your liquid. Particularly good for degassing your wine or degassing your spirit at the end of fermentation. What we're now going to do is we're just going to check the hydrometer. The hydrometer is a, uh, the only sophisticated piece of equipment we actually get. We're not looking at crown jewels, it's about four pounds for this particular thing. It's made of glass, so be careful because they do break. What this will do is it will measure the gravity of the liquid, the thickness of the liquid. The more sugar that is present in the liquid, the higher this is going to read. When the yeast converts the sugar to alcohol, the thickness of the liquid becomes less. Alcohol is thinner than water. So as fermentation takes place, this will drop further and further and further into the liquid. What we need to do is do a start gravity of the liquid first so that we can see what our start point is. Now with the starter kits, you'll end up with the trial jar that this actually comes in. And all we have to do is drop that into our liquid, drop the hydrometer in and give it a spin. As you spin it, it will stop it clinging to the sides and it will give us a reading. And this reading, taken across the liquid line, is showing just up to 1100. That's 1 1.100. And what I'm going to do, just to make sure this is all properly dissolved, is I'm just going to give it another stir and make sure there's no sugars settled in the bottom of this container. We want them all nicely dissolved in the liquid, and then I'm going to repeat the process.
just give it a spin again and again taking the reading across the line we are 1.100 so that's our start gravity for this particular kit if we were using sugar six bags of sugar as opposed to seven bags of glucose powder it's going to be slightly less than that we're now going to add two products that come with the starter kit we've got turbo carbon which is the still spirits turbo carbon this is a, a liquid carbon and it's particularly thick and gungy and black and horrible so be careful if you get it over your clothes it's a nightmare in she goes you've also got some thicker bits at the bottom so I'm just going to slide those in just make sure we've not got anything left from this particular sachet in she goes and we're going to add the yeast don't forget the temperature of this is now 25 so in the yeast goes sprinkled over the surface. In the yeast we have absorbance. In the carbon we use the carbon because it's designed to stop the yeast producing off flavours. What we're trying to create here is a totally neutral wash. Something that is, if you can imagine, alcoholic water. It wants to taste of nothing. Using the carbon and the inhibitors in the yeast will allow us to achieve that. The reason we're wanting this is because once this is finished fermenting, we're going to put it inside our still, and the still is then going to extract the alcohol. And the more off flavours that are in this, the more the still is going to extract those off flavours. So that's why it's really important that this tastes of absolutely nothing, or as neutral as we possibly can. So we're just going to make sure that carbon that we've added, and the yeast, is nicely mixed, and the liquid is really going quite black now. That carbon is really spread throughout. Don't worry, no need to panic. This will all become beautifully clear by the time we've finished the fermentation and done the clearing. Okay, so we've checked the hydrometer reading. We've checked the temperature just to make sure that that is 25. All we need to do now is put the lid on and add an airlock which is half filled with water just across there. The idea with the airlock is that when the thing starts to ferment, i.e. the yeast is converting the sugar to alcohol, it gives off CO2. As the CO2 comes off, it's going to go through the airlock and out and at the same time it's going to make a bubbling noise. So it's going to bubble, 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 and the bubbling will indicate that fermentation is taking place. Now sometimes you'll find that the fermentation won't actually bubble, but we've done a hydrometer reading at the start. The reason we've done it at the start is really important. So I'm going to put that in place and then I'll just explain why it's so important. In she goes. If it doesn't bubble through the airlock, as long as it's fermenting, we don't have a problem. If it's not fermenting, then we have a problem. We've done a start hydrometer reading and the start hydrometer reading was 1.100. If the bubbles aren't coming through the airlock, it might well be that the seal on the red grommet or the seal on the grommet is not 100% effective. So it's well worthwhile then just putting a bit of Vaseline around the seal and making sure that that's all happening. Once we've done that, if it's still not bubbling, then we need to drop our hydrometer in, preferably 24, 48 hours after we've done uh, the start of fermentation. And as long as that hydrometer that we're using is actually dropping into the liquid, so as long as this is moving down, we haven't got a problem. Fermentation is taking place. And if fermentation is taking place, the yeast is converting the sugar to alcohol. So the only time we need to panic is when it stops. What we're going to do though with this liquid is we're now going to move it to a place where we're going to allow the fermentation to take place. We're looking for a room temperature, as we described earlier, between 20 and 25 for that fermentation to take place. And it's going to take about seven days from start to finish 
give or take depending on your temperatures. So if it takes a bit longer, don't panic. But we're looking on that hydrometer for the same reading for two days. As long as we've got the same reading for two days, we know fermentation's finished. And in this case, that is going to be when this little hydrometer is just sticking out of the liquid. We're looking for it somewhere in the region of 0.980 to 0.990, even up to 1.00. If you don't think your hydrometer's working, just as a gauge, drop it into water and it will read 1.000. Okay. But as, as I said earlier, remember, alcohol is thinner than water. So as we convert it more and more to alcohol, we're going to get thinner and thinner, and hence the reason why the hydrometer will drop further and further into the liquid. We're moving this now to a, a, a place between 20 and 25 for the seven days for fermentation, and then we'll come back as to what we're going to do next. Well, things are starting to get exciting now. The fermentation has just about finished, or should I say our wash is just about complete. It's showing the same reading on our hydrometer, this little gadget, for two days, so we know it's pretty well finished. What we've now got to do is we've got a little bit of work to do. When the yeast converts the sugar to alcohol, it gives off CO2. We've got CO2 present in our liquid. We need to degas it to get rid of that. We've got options. We can use our paddle or our spoon to give it a good whipping to get rid of it. We're probably going to have to do it for maybe 24 hours, maybe 48 hours, three or four times a day for about three or four minutes. Get rid of all those gases that are inside the liquid. We'll see a buildup of foam on the top as we're doing it. If you're really lazy, you can get one of these, which is a degassing stick, stainless steel rod with two prongs on it. Very useful as well for making wine and other things as well. Obviously, turn it into position and then we reverse it and it goes back the other way. And just keep doing that inside the liquid until we've got rid of a lot of the gases. As I say, the degasser makes life quite easy and makes it a lot more simple. Once we've done that, what we then need to do is add our finings. Now the finings, in this particular case, we use a two-part fining. We use part A, which is a kiesel sole, and part B, which is a chitazan. Now, between the two of them, they'll take everything out of that liquid and leave it lovely and clear. Now, under normal circumstances, finings are the enemy. If we add finings to wine or beer, we're actually causing problems because the finings take things out. They'll remove flavour, colour, bouquet, body, all the things in a wine or a beer that we don't want to lose. But in our spirit, what we're trying to do, remember we've got this yeast that's got giving off no off flavours. We're trying to create a liquid that tastes of nothing. So with the, fi with the finings, we can be absolutely vicious. We can make sure that they remove all the things that we've been worried about in our wine and beer. So the finings will take 24 hours to work. We add part A to start with, two hours later we add part B. As I say, they're vicious. They'll take out everything. We're now going to be left, after 24 hours, with a thick black sediment and the liquid at the top will be lovely and clear. And all we're going to do is we're going to use our siphon, which comes with the kit, to get the clear liquid off the thick black sediment. And as you can see, the siphon has got a U-tube with it. This expands and will be done to exactly the right height of your bucket. The siphon has got an anti-sediment device. The idea being that when this goes down to the bottom of the bucket, that solid part sits on the bottom of the bucket and the liquid comes over the top into the siphon from here. That way, we're not drawing up the sediment from right at the bottom of the bucket. So the anti-sediment device is a bonus. We've also got a bucket clip on the siphon. So the bucket clip slots into place and that allows you to have your two hands free to be able to work and do whatever you want to do. When the thing's being siphoned, obviously you need to do the sucking motion. So with the siphon in place, and we suck, and into the bucket. As long as it's below the level of the bottom of this bucket, you'll have no problems at all siphoning it. 
You've also got a little tap on the end, so if you need to stop it, you can, and you've got the turn there to be able to do it. When you get near the bottom of the bucket, all we suggest you do is put a wedge at the back so that you slope the bucket towards the container, and that way you won't leave any of the goodness behind. If the sediment gets disturbed for some reason, just stop, leave it for probably an hour, and it will settle out again and you can start the process again. So no panic on that. We've siphoned the liquid then off the sediment into the bucket. And we've now got in our bucket, bearing in mind we started at 25 litres. We'll now end up with 24 litres in our bucket. We're going to lose roughly a litre when we actually do the siphoning process. So we've now got 24 litres of lovely clear liquid. And remember, this is going to taste like alcoholic water. It's 14% alcohol, so it's quite strong, but it will be like alcoholic water. What we're going to do now is we're going to take four litres of that lovely clear liquid and we're going to start the distillation process. Now to distill, we need a still. And here we have our little Dalek, our little baby still. This holds four litres. So inside the still, we have a line here which you won't pick up. There's a line that says full. And all we need to do is put a four litres of clear liquid in up to that line. That line is at four litres. And all we do is put our lid on, connect it up, like so. Put our plug into the mains, switch the machine on, and put the collecting tray in position. The first hour, the machine will heat up. At the end of the first hour, it will start to drip through the little black nozzle into our collecting chamber. And our collecting chamber is graduated. And what we're looking for is 800 mils of lovely clear liquor coming through. And how long will that take? That will take a further hour. So we're looking at two hours from start to finish, an hour to warm up and an hour to collect. And at the end of two hours, we're gonna have 800 mils, roughly, in this particular container. It might take a tad longer. If your water, if your liquid is really cold, it could take a bit longer. If it's warmer, it might take a bit less. But we're looking for, ideally, 800 mils. Now, some people will collect 700, some of the instructions say 700, but I found 800 is a perfect amount. So we're gonna collect for two hours that liquor. When we've collected it, we can then check to see what the alcohol content is using our alcohol thermometer you will find it is 60% alcohol, 60% ABV, alcohol by volume. Now that 60% alcohol by volume, what we would recommend is that you add 50% water to it. So our 800 mils are gonna become 1200 mils because we're adding 50% water, i.e. 400 mils. Our 800 mils are 1200 mils. We've now reduced the strength from 60% down to 40%. And at 40%, we've got the perfect level for all our flavorings. Think in terms of gin, whiskey, rum, brandy. They're all around 40% ABV. So that's what we're looking for as our target, 40%. And what we're then going to do, the final process that we're going to do is we're going to feed it through a little black carbon cartridge. There is the black carbon cartridge. That needs to be soaked in hot water before we start. But imagine that now sitting on top of your jug. And we've got 1200 mils here of alcohol at 40%. All we're going to do is pour that into this jug. And that will then take its course of running through that carbon cartridge to remove any more impurities. It could take six hours. It could take eight hours to run through. Don't worry. Just leave it 
You've got a nice little lid that can slot on the top. Just leave it. Don't worry about it. Once you've done that, you've now got your vodka or your alcohol to use for your flavorings. Now, just before we go there, a couple of things that we need to sort of bear in mind. This particular machine is not the most efficient machine. And that's why it's so important that the alcohol that we make at the start is really clean and crisp. That is why you should only ever use the triple distilled still spirits yeast with carbon. Do not use any other make of either still spirits or any other products. It's the only one that should be used on this machine. It's also really important to make sure you dilute the alcohol down from 60% to 40% before you run it through that carbon cartridge. Carbon is not effective if you run it through at 60% or even 50%. It's got to be less than 50%, which is why we always recommend 40%, because once you've done it, you're then at that level. So it's really, really important to dilute it. There's certain machines on the market which will put a filter under the nozzle and collect. You may as well not bother. The carbon is not going to do its job if you do that. Now what you must also remember is, as I say, this is a particularly inefficient machine, but because we're using such quality alcohol that's going in it, we actually end up producing a fabulous quality. So if you like, we get away with it by using that. But because it's a pretty inefficient machine, what we also recommend that you do is that you use these ceramic saddles. Every time you do a fermentation, uh, sorry, a distillation in the still, you put these little ceramic saddles in the bottom of the still. And you also use a product called distiller's conditioning. And you put a capful of that in the wash as well before you start doing the distillation. The idea behind these two products is to prevent what's called surge boiling. If you were to have some milk on a stove, for example, and you boiled it, what can happen from time to time is you'll get a buildup of bubbles on the base of the pan. And when those bubbles join together, it creates like a small mini explosion. The same can happen with this particular machine unless you use the distiller's conditioning and the actual ceramic saddles. So again, that's why we recommend that these are used throughout every distillation process. So let's just go back to the actual distillation. We've got a wash with 24 litres. We're going to take four litres of that wash and put it in the machine. We've therefore got six times four litres from one of the washers. So imagine we've got six lots going through the machine. Each time we're collecting 800 mils at 60%. We're then diluting it down 50% with water, so our 800 mils are becoming 1,200 mils. We've reduced our alcohol content from 60% down to 40%. So imagine we've now got 1.2 litres, and we're going to have six lots of that going through from one bucket full. We've got 7.2 litres of alcohol at 40%. We've got, if you like, 10 bottles of vodka from a wash. Now, when you look at the costings of it, that doesn't take a lot to realize how much you're gonna get out of your machine and how much money you can start to save. Now, depending on where you are, depends on, obviously, the legality of the process. In certain parts of the world, it is illegal to do your own distillation. So check with the regulations before you actually get into this. This machine does four things. It does fuel ethanol, alcohol distillation, distilled water, and essential oil extraction. If you use this machine for making alcohol, you should apply for a license in certain countries. So as I say, check that out yourselves. We're not going down there. It's not for us to decide whether you can do it or not. We've now got our 10 bottles of vodka from our wash. What are we gonna do with it? Well, we've fed it through our carbon cartridge, We've got what we want out of the carbon cartridge, and we're now left with this pure alcohol. We can now add our flavorings. And the still spirits people 
have given us a fantastic a range of flavorings. And what I would suggest is you actually look at the other videos that we've done where we go into a bit of detail about things that we can do. But here, for example, is a VSOP. This one is going to make a litre. These are all the classic flavorings which we believe are the best. There's a white rum, which is similar to a Bacardi. We've got a golden rum, which is sort of like a Queensland rum. We've got a navy rum. We've got a gin. We've got a Tennessee bourbon, like a Jack Daniels. We've got a single malt whiskey. I could go on and on with all the different flavorings we want. But all we would do is we'd take that flavoring and we'd add it to a liter of the vodka mix that we've come through our carbon cartridge. We mix it together, leave it a couple of days for the flavorings to blend in. Once they've blended in, we've done our job. We can then drink it. If you want to make liqueurs, we do things like the Icon Amaretta. This you would pour into a, uh, a 75 CL bottle and then you top it up with the vodka. Give it a good shake and you've then got a lovely Amaretto. We've also got things like a Southern Smooth, which would be very similar to a Southern Haze. Again, done in exactly the same way as you would the Amaretto. We've also got some other flavorings which come in a bottle. And each of these bottles will make three times 75 CL bottles. So you'll end up with three times 75 CL bottles of tequila. What we recommend to everybody is when you do your distillation, when you've done your wash, you've got your wash, it's finished, it's lovely and clear. You need to try and get that through the machine as quickly as possible. When I say as quickly as possible, as long as you can get it through within five to seven days, that's great. But don't leave it much longer because it will pick up an infection if you're not careful. So try and get it through as quickly as possible. Once you've run it through the machine and run it through your carbon cartridge, you can then keep your alcohol. That's not going to go off. So if you can keep it in glass, that's a real bonus. It's not going to go off. So you've no need to decide what you're going to do in terms of flavoring that until you need it. It's quite a bonus to have quite a collection of flavorings that you're going to use. Because if you run out of a certain type, like say for the sake of argument, you've run out of the VSOP, if you've got a flavoring in the back, all you have to do is get your alcohol, mix your flavoring, you've now got a VSOP. If you end up with five sashes of VOP and you make them all up, then obviously you're restricting what you can do in the future. You only need one bottle at a time. So just make it as and when you need it. As I said, on the actual flavorings and what have you, go on the website and have a look at the section that we deal with on the flavorings, because it's really quite interesting. Also, there are other things that you can look at on the website which are involving the different types of filtration systems which are available. We also have the new T500 still, which is a bigger version of this particular still, and that will do 25 litres all in one go. So you've got other options. There are videos on the site showing all those different things. But the great thing about the air still, it's really small, it's really convenient, it's got a, a, a fan system in it which does the, the cooling, just to basically tell you what exactly is happening. Once we put the liquid in the actual still, we take the boil point up to between 78 and 82. At that point, boiling happens with alcohol. The alcohol will come off the water, leaving the water behind. The vapors will then come off from the liquid and will go up into the lid of the still. And the coil in the still will then get cooled by the fan. And as it cools that vapor, it will then turn back into liquid and that's what drips through into your collecting chamber. Now, as I say, we do other versions of other types of stills that you can get, so have a good look round, but this one is so convenient, it's so easy to use, and it doesn't require any water cooling like some of the other stills do. So I'm hoping that you're gonna have a great deal of fun with the uh, air still. I'm hoping that you'll really enjoy yourself. You'll have a bit of fun, you'll enjoy playing with it, and you'll end up producing some great product. Some people like the vodka as it comes out the machine. It is also our most popular flavoring. So some people like to use the vodka flavoring. We also have a, 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 a sachet of vodka flavoring as well called pure vodka, and we do it in the bottles. 
but the choice is yours. You need to check it and see what you think. You're looking roughly cost-wise um, about a pound a bottle for vodka. For any of the flavourings that you're going to add to, like whiskey or gin or rum, you're looking at around 220 250 a bottle, depending on which ones you're going to do. So it doesn't take you long to realise that you can start saving some serious money on this particular machine. So enjoy yourselves and have some fun, and I'll speak to you again soon.